Geospatial Web 2.0, or the GeoWeb, is the combination of technologies like Google Earth and social networking. It is considered to have revolutionized how non-experts can use and volunteer geographic information. From OpenStreetMap to TripAdvisor, new technologies have changed how citizens communicate about the places they care about. Potentially, the GeoWeb can be a tool to address the crucial issues of our time, such as global environmental change. A research team based at McGill University that consists of projects across Canada from six different universities is exploring the ways that GeoWeb may be used to contextualize observations and opinions on environmental change and develop a technical and policy infrastructure to support climate change response and adaptation. An emerging theme across the research team is the interest in the GeoWeb from citizens in rural and remote Canadian communities to communicate their environmental change concerns. Professor Renee Sieber, a lead researcher with the team, is a specialist on the impact of new technologies on environmental and social change, and specifically of the GeoWeb. Well, you think about it most basically as uh, computerized maps. If you want to think in terms of brands, think about Google Earth and Google Maps, or Microsoft has Bing Maps, uh, NASA uh, has Whirlwind. So these are online maps, but the really great thing about them is the interactivity that they can afford. So uh, you don't have to be a rocket science to be able to zoom into Google Earth. You can easily go from the planet to your block. Students on the team, like Ian Parfit at the University of British Columbia and Angela Grant at McGill University, are working directly with communities, governments, and nonprofits to understand the potential of the GeoWeb. Well, PGI is volunteer geographic information, and um, we're thinking about it in the context of, of information that's contributed by the public to um, some sites on the internet. And it's kind of got a history in, in different kinds of public participation and citizen science, that kind of thing. Why can't we explore the possibility that we have millions of people on the ground who can respond quickly to crises, who know their regions intimately, their neighborhoods intimately, who can recognize, recognize change when it happens and then respond to that change. For students working with people in rural and remote communities, it is all about choice. The GeoLab just opens up a lot of new avenues that weren't there before necessarily. A lot of these tools, even though we're using them for really specific things, it's nice to see how well they can kind of be just altered a little bit to be used for something completely different. Like look how many of us are all using the GeoLive application and how many different things now we've started to be able to cover with it. Just small adaptions and you can make it to cover an entirely different issue at, I would imagine, a relatively low cost. Organizations working on the ground to address environmental change recognize the importance of volunteer geographic information to inform and help develop policy. John Legault from Nova Scotia has experience working with fishing communities in Atlantic Canada. Because if you can turn around and query the fishermen or the foresters or the miners using a GeoWeb application, you can get so much information. Everybody can be an expert. It's the Wikipedia model, but applied to maps. Yeah, so the people who are contributing or now feel a part of this bigger picture, you know, protecting the environment. You, my, myself, yes, I identified this, yeah. this rare species that needs to be protected and then other people can learn from that. In recognizing the increasing attention on these technologies outside of Canadian cities, our research team hosted a two-day workshop at McGill University entitled Connecting Rural and Remote Communities Through the GeoWeb. We brought together students and faculty and people from the nonprofit sector to talk about the challenges of using these technologies and, and adopting an ideology that technology maybe solves some of our data problems. Participants at the workshop shared their diverse experiences. Students presented their research and ideas from places such as the Okanagan Valley all the way to Newfoundland and topics ranging from wildlife monitoring to food security. So the theme of the project is community mapping on the GeoWeb. And um, this is a community-based participatory mapping research partnership. And uh, it's investigating participation in food systems issues. 
uh, using the GeoWeb. Participants during the workshop identified citizens in Canadian, rural and remote communities are important sources of local environmental knowledge and hold huge potential to use the GeoWeb to influence government policy and to inform sustainable development of their communities. However, significant challenges exist. In particular, there remains a digital divide between Canadian and urban remote regions that begins with limited access to the necessary equipment but extends to availability of high-speed internet and the technical proficiency to be able to build the web-based maps. We build into these technologies the assumptions that everyone should be able to use it and if they can't, they are deficient. And why don't we blame the technology instead of blaming ourselves? As a result of the workshop, the direction of our research team this year is working to find ways to overcome these challenges and extend the choice to communities and to individuals that have historically been left off the map and their voice potentially left out of important decision-making processes.